Hey, Internet. Guys, gals, artists, colorists, Hellboy enthusiasts. Whomever is watching, my name is Mike. I am an author and a fledgling comic book colorist. Uh, I'm working on my first two crea creator-owned projects, and I hope to bring you pages from those and hopefully a different perspective. There's great information on YouTube about comic book coloring, and I'm going to try and do something a little different. I'm going to show you some different tools, uh, tools outside of you know your normal lassoing and grab and gradding and classic digital painting. I'm just going to try and, and, and give you a little bit different perspective. And today I'd like to start with the work of Dave Stewart, which is very unusual, or his work on Hellboy. And Hellboy is one of my favorite comics. Uh, because the stories are so old, they seem as old as stories. You know, Hellboy's always falling into the great below, the, the, the unknown, to face either his greatest fear or his father or whatever. They're, it's just these very archetypal, interesting, legend-based stories and with, with a fresh spin. It's like that famous quote that every story has been told, but not every story has been told in every way. And that's why I got into, to, maybe not comic book coloring, but, uh, into drawing and I've just I've, I've only been drawing a few months so the drawing that we have today is something I did on New Year's with a, a king size sharpie and a pencil so it is not expertly done and I am by no means a drawing expert and I am actively trying to get better every day because I have a story that I want to tell and it's going to be better with pictures than with words and I already have all this other digital knowledge so I, I figure maybe uh, one day I too can make a, a comic book. That's my goal. Or a graphic novel or whatever you want to call it, if it's got adult themes. So what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, a scan that I've darkened up and I redrew some of the lines. And let's get in here so you can see what the drawing looks like because it's got some problems. If you look, you can already start to see the artifacting from the pencils. This was just a, a pencil drawing. And then I, I deleted all the light areas and made all the other areas black. So there's little holes in here. It's imperfect, I know. But we're trying to do an approximation of a Mike Mignola drawing. And for those purposes, I think it does that so that we can color it. Uh, what I should have done in the areas that I redrew, like I redrew these teeth, um, if you see this, uh, this brush is very, very smooth. In fact, I think it's called smooth inker. <laughs> And instead of drawing with that, what I should have done is move the mode to dissolve here. I realized that just before I started making this video. And then you get an effect very similar to that. And you can, uh, if you turn down the opacity to maybe 70%, you can get these, you can get edges that look, you know, similar to that. Uh, that's what I could have done. I don't know how useful this will be to you, but drawing in dissolve mode with an inker could be useful at some point. So we have this drawing. On top of it, we have a color hold, which is just uh, where I've colored the inks in this area to uh, to approximate the original. Now, this is the cover of the Fury issue two, and if you haven't read that, uh, Dark Horse released a moving comic, which to me just looks like the the liquify tool and the transform tool, where you make a movie frame by frame, which sounds really painstaking. I don't know if that's how they do it. That's just what it looks like. But go look. Uh, Type in the Storm and the Fury Hellboy moving comic into the the search bar of YouTube, and it should come up. And there's six of them, and it's one of my favorite uh, Hellboy stories. Uh, I believe it's the second to last one before they start the Hellboy and Hell line. But uh, it's I love it. I love it. I love it. And it, the moving picture thing is really cool. It's a good idea. But could you imagine like liquefying a little bit of this dragon a little bit at a time and moving it around so that it uh, it looked like, not like a movie. I don't know. You got to watch it. It's just, it's very interesting. It's kind of bizarre too. And then we have this finished color that I did. And this is what we're going to go for today. We're going to kind of approximate Dave Stewart's work, which goes overlooked on Hellboy, not in the industry. And I know he wins Eisner's and everyone, everyone loves him and he does all kinds of cool stuff. But his work on Hellboy, I, I feel like it's so perfect that it's almost invisible. And th that should be the goal of any colorist, to really serve the artwork, uh, especially when you have great artwork like Mike Magnola and not this weird, small-headed, odd-positioned Hellboy that I've done here. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I, got, I, I downloaded like a big version of the cover, uh, a high resolution, 
And I looked at it and I'm like, oh God, I should have like, why am I, I, I could have redone this so much better. But at that point, like train left the station, I had already colored it. So uh, if we look in here, and I want you to, to pay attention over here to the, I'm going to use the eyedropper and pick out some colors and you can see where it's darker up here. And then we kind of get more saturated in here and a little bit lighter, but there are new colors like everywhere. Uh, this is a very, I mean, we're super zoomed in right now. And this is, a, I, th I don't know if we're at 600 DPI or 300 DPI, but it's enough that you're not going to see much. I mean, the only reason that this is jagged is that there's a, these are pencils. So, uh, what is going on now? It's funny that like you, like I think that I'm so competent at Photoshop, and then you, if you start doing a video, like that's when it, it'll just you won't be able to draw on a layer for some reason. What is going on? So we're gonna approximate this effect. Now in the originals, it, it looks like Dave Stewart treats this whole thing like a canvas, and that he takes a very very small brush and goes in there and and like a a brush like well here I have a brush like I think that he uses. And this would be painstaking. We're going to do a quick version, a fast version of this textured, of how to get all these blended colors, the textured, something you can use. Because in reality, if, if you want to do this properly, it seems like he uses a brush uh, similar to this, okay? A small, heavy brush where his flow and opacity and size are all controlled by pen pressure. And so you can you can you can get all these overlaid colors, and you can get in there and you can kind of scribble in all these different, you know, every shade of everything, right? Depending on the pen on the pen pressure, that's probably what he does. I don't know I don't know Dave Stewart. I don't know I don't have any firsthand knowledge. I'm thinking that he doesn't block it in real lazy like this, uh, because it's just so nuanced when you look at the the original work, and I. I would highly suggest you get uh, Hellboy in some sort of digital, high resolution digital format. It looks so good on a tablet or on your computer. And I, 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 over time, I guess I was kind of a purist at first that was like, I want the physical book and I usually buy trade paperbacks, something like that. And, and I gave it a chance. I gave, uh, in digital comics a chance, comicsology or whatever. And I really like the setting where you, where you get to go panel by panel because the artist gets to dictate that all right you get to look at this then you look at this and there's the implied contract between the reader and the and, and the comic book creator that your eyes are going to go top to bottom left to right right we all know how to read a comic book but it's just like reading any other book but if there's some you know violent scene or fire or explosion at the bottom your eye is going to kind of naturally drift there and you, you can interrupt the flow so I love uh, digital comics that have the setting to, to go panel by panel, and then it moves you into the text. You get to see, you get to, it gets to, it tells your eye. It doesn't guide your eye. It straight up shows you, it only shows you what you're supposed to be looking at. And I really enjoy that about digital comics. Um, but in, in terms of the, the color work of Dave Stewart, it's the only way to really see it in all of its glory. Because the... Uh, I mean, every color is expressed, you know, the, the glossy new graphic, no you know, the bound graphic novel versions. It's not like, it's not poor resolution, but it would be even better if it were at a higher resolution to see the nuance. And I'm not saying it looks exactly like what we have here, but it's similar. So let's talk about how we get this effect. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to this flats layer. And it's, it's, and I'm going to turn this color hold off. Uh, so it's a little easier on our eyes. Now I've ch I chose to use these flats because when you're doing this very nuanced approach, um, you know what? I'm going to jump back down to this color layer because we need to talk about the colors that are in here. All of these colors are virtually the same. I mean, we can tell, it, and it's not muddy. Everything is clearly defined, and a lot of that is is the the quality of the artwork. But if I asked you what color this was, you would easily tell me that's a very saturated orange color. Your eye can find that. Any very saturated color your, your eye finds easy. And this, you, you would say, you might say yellow, you might say orange, it's kind of in between, right? Uh, really, it seems to, it, it's living much more in the orange, but it's, but it's very light, so it's hard, it's hard to tell. You can tell that this is a, a hypersaturated orange, and this is an orange, and this is an orange. 
But what color is this? Would you believe me if I told you the hue of this? Look at that. I just tapped out here. Look where that is. It's, it's super light. And this are virtually the same. And do you see this as orange? Because this, this is a very, very orange color. It's orange and black, right? Out here, the same thing. This is going to be darker. His wings are a little bit darker. Darker up here. But these are all orange colors. Now, Hellboy is pushing towards red, but he's not red. We think of him as red, but he's, he's, uh, he's all over the place. So he's, he's everywhere from really orange to really red, uh, depending on the light or whatever. We can see that this is a very red color, and this is, you know, it's rendered, so. <clears throat> but it's subtle. They all, I'm sure that at a low enough resolution, they almost look like flats, right? This is about the size that you would be viewing a comic book. And they look like flats, but when you dig in there, I mean, they're not. It's not flat at all. You know, there's a ton more saturation in here, even though they're basically the same color. And it, and it does a very interesting thing uh, to your eyes. It's it's just a it's it's an effect that I mean I don't know that I would use this effect very often. It requires a a, a a certain kind of artwork, and it doesn't have to be Mignola style artwork. It just it's not something that you, it's so subtle you wouldn't use it for everything, right? But uh, now that we've looked at the colors, let's look at how to get the effect. And we're not going to do a big area because even even when you're doing it fast, it takes time. Uh, I'm going to turn that layer off. I'll leave that hold off still. And let's, uh, we're going to select this area here, which is the background, this, uh, this teal color. And we're going to copy it to a new layer, Control J, and then we'll lock the transparent pixels. So now we have this layer that only we can color on. You can't color out of the line, outside the lines. Uh, and we're going to grab a color here. Now, this is with that heavy brush. We would need a very small, and we'd have to be, you know, we'd have to be scrubbing in here for a very long time to get the the intended effects. And I'm sure it takes him a while, uh, Mr. Stewart, I'm referring to, to do that. So what I've done is I have a bunch of uh, cloud brushes, and I'm going to take one here. Uh, and this is the one I found that works the the best. You probably want to mix if you really want to do this right, but I'm just going to do it with this one brush, and it's super randomized and pen pressure. Uh, changes the opacity and the flow, uh, which is something that you're going to want. And, you know, this, this, this brush can get, a, can get very good effects. You just size it up and down and maybe we go to white and kind of, kind of mix it into there and see it's, it's a cloud brush, right? You've probably got 20 of them. Well, have you ever tried to paint with it? You know, I'll, because that, that is where I found this to be very valuable. So I'm just going to block this in here, and we'll, we'll go down to, like, maybe right here. Okay? And, I, and just bear with me here. You're, you're going to think that this is kind of crazy. And we'll kind of get smaller as we go. And I know that this, is, this is, looks nuts. You're like, this could never end up be a flat thing. But because I, this would never work if you were using, like, traditionally separated values, values that were further apart in terms of color, but because we're living really, really close together, this is going to, this is going to blend in a way that doesn't seem uh, offensive, or at least that's the hope. Let's scribble all this in, and this is going to, we're going to need to spend more time on it than I am, you know, you can't just, that, that's not going to be good enough, right? We're going to need to do some, some detailing. Because this thing is so randomized, it is hard to control, and you may have to undo and redo. And in my case, I'm just going to paint over and, and repaint over uh, until I get a nice stepped effect. Because you kind of want, I mean, if you look at it, the work at Hellboy looks a lot like like the world's weirdest lassoing. You know, the, the colors are kind of laid on top of one another. And but there are little areas, there are little like you know little pockets of dark and pockets of light, and they don't necessarily. It is rendering, but it doesn't look like it's it's rendering in a non-traditional sort of form. So now let's just see now if we click around. See, we're not we don't really have a ton of different colors. We have some, so we need to keep uh, need to just keep building. And I guess we'll just do this area. 
up here. And now we can start to kind of pull from what's already here. Once you get enough, I'm, I'm taking colors from the outside of it and bring them in. And see, once you, as you block down, what you should do is you should start sizing down your brush. And then we can zoom in just a little bit and start working these, these colors and these shapes and just getting them where we want. I think it needs to be a little bit more saturated towards the middle here. I don't think that we have enough saturated orange here. I mean, it's all very saturated, but I need even more. Blend in a little bit of this slightly lighter saturated. That, that's kind of how the original looks. There are these, it's, it's a bit darker towards the top the top edges and because we're not using a very we would need to to size the brush down something like this to get the right his his shapes are very very edged and etched and with a with a small brush or at least a brush with a with a bowl you know this this brush has pretty soft edges you would you, you would need a brush with a, <clears throat> a lot more texture in the edges uh, to approximate his effect. And look, this doesn't look anything like clouds, right? Even though it's a cloud brush. And, I just, I, and while I know that this isn't nearly as good as, you know, the actual, the actual work on the comic, it's just a very interesting, it's an interesting approximation, and I think that it could be useful to someone somewhere, hopefully. all these blue pixels out of here. This area is is the most saturated in the image right around these edges and it's uh, it's almost flat. You know when you click around in here it shouldn't move too much and then up here it should move every time you click and it does and look at it. Even if there was a few few outlier values in there I don't know how they got there that need to be snuffed out. But anyways, that's how I uh, how I approximated and created uh, the final image, which is this. And here you can you can see. Let me turn that color hold back on so it looks right. You can see yeah, they almost look like thumbprints, like smudges. And it's clouded, but it's not cloudy. Uh, if that makes any sense. And there are these. I uh, see. I got it, I got the the brush down to a small size. A somewhat small size, but still it would need to be much, much smaller if we really wanted to uh, uh, approximate the effect. But you know, we can look, if we click around on Hellboy, you know, he's, he's a lot of different colors and different shades and different hues. And this is super dark right here. And zoomed in like this, you can tell that there's a lot going on. But think about it. This is, you know, it's a cover. It's this big. You can't. This stuff is more, it just makes, it's this organic thing that you feel and that you don't, you don't necessarily see. I mean, you could see the darkness up here and on the wing, and then that's about it. And it's just, it's very bizarre to me how orange this drawing is without looking completely orange. So, that is going to be it for this little, uh, little tutorial on... How to fake Hellboy effects, right? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know if there are any. This is since this is my first video. The production quality is going to improve greatly, but I'd like to know if uh, if there are any production issues. If there are cracks or pops, or if there are any problems with the video quality. I have it turned all the way up for my screen capture software, so hopefully it does a good job capturing. Uh, 
And, and please ask questions. If I did something that you're not quite sure how I did it, I'd be happy to explain it. Uh, or if you want me to approximate some other style. I'm planning on doing the, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, Marta Gracia did a video or did a did a cover of D Dante. It's the Inhumans, the 2013 Inhumans uh, issue two. I don't know what it is with me in issue two, but the one where D Dante's got got his hand uh, like in a really gnarly position, and it's Joe Mad pencils that he painted over, or it might be inks. It kind of there's like no black in the whole image, but I love that image, and so I drew it while I was watching the uh, the playoffs last weekend. So I need to ink that, and then, and I don't know how to ink. I don't know how to draw. I'm, you know, it's so, well, please, you, there's no no reason to insult my drawing. I understand that I, I've only been doing it a few months. I'm bad. I'm very bad. I'm aware. So, internet, take it easy on me if you can. If not, I'm a big boy. I can take it. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Or if you have another suggestion, I'd be more than happy to do a poor sketch and then color less poor underneath it. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, I look forward to bringing you more content and you guys helping me get better. And hopefully I, I do the same for you. Okay. Take care.